Hello, welcome. We've got a long problem here, but take a moment and read it. I, when we solve it together, I hope you'll realize that this problem is not nearly as scary as it seems. Okay, so let's read it. Um, they're telling us we've got some equations here based on climate data. Okay, so we're dealing with climate data, and what we're measuring in both cases, we have the average monthly temperature, right, in Bar Harbor. So we have B of X is for Bar Harbor. Okay, so I'll use blue for that one. So B of X, Bar Harbor has this equation that models the average monthly temperature. And for Phoenix, uh, we have P of X for, for Phoenix. And I'll write that in red. All right, so right here, we've got Phoenix. Oops, a little too long. Okay, anyway, so what, what do they want us to do? Which statement cannot be concluded based on the average monthly temperature models X months after starting data collection? The first part says, all right, well, average monthly temperature variation is more in Bar Harbor than in Phoenix. All right, how do we do that? Well, in each case, what we're going to do is we're going to take the midline. That's this number right here. It's the vertical shift, how much we're pushing the sine wave up or down. It's the midline. Same thing here. This is our midline. And this is our amplitude, right? So we look at the difference between the midline and ampl amplitude to get the variation. Here, here's what I mean. So let's say um, you know, we have a graph, just to get a sense of what's happening here. So OK, this is our graph. And we've got some, some sine wave, something like this. OK. And here, let's say that this sine wave goes from, I don't know, 3 to negative 3. The variation here would be 6. It would be the highest point, right? It's the high point and then the low point down here. So when we're finding a variation, we're saying what's the highest value minus the lowest value of, of our function. And how do we find that in general? What we do is, if I just, just draw another quick graph, you know, we can really have, we can have this, um, these sine waves anywhere, really. Um, but the idea is that you have some kind of sine wave, some, some function. Let's say it's up here now. Let's draw a midline first. Let's get, let's say this is our midline right here. Okay. So this is our midline of our sine wave. It's, it's a little thick there. Sorry about that. But maybe our sine wave is now like this. Right? And we want to find the variation now. How do we do that? Well, let's say, just for argument's sake, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So our midline is now at 3. Our high point is at 5, and our low point is at 1. So you could just do 5 minus 1, and that means the variation is 4. But what if you didn't know that information, right? What would you have to do? Let's pretend that the equation here is y equals, um, so our amplitude, what's our amplitude? 1, 2. The amplitude is from the distance from the midline to a peak or a valley, so the amplitude is 2. Let's pretend uh, it's the sine of x and then plus 3. So here, this plus 3 is this midline. This 2 is the amplitude. And we can use these two numbers to figure out the total variation. So what would I do to figure it out? I'd say, well, take my midline 3. And, and again, imagine just I have this equation here and add 2 to it. OK, that's 5. That's my high point. And then I take my amplitude my midline, excuse me, and I subtract 2 from that, and that's my low point. And then I find the difference f between 5 and 1, which is 4, and that would be the variation. So we're going to do this process, but with more complicated numbers. So if I go back up here, we're going to take 55.3, and we're going to add it to our amplitude, and then we're going to do 55.3 and subtract our amplitude, and then subtract the difference between those two numbers. And there are other ways to set this up, but this is the way I prefer. So 55.3 plus 23.9. Okay, that's our, our peak. And then 55.3 minus 23.9, that's our valley. And the range between these two is our variation. So 79.2 minus 31.4. That's 47.8. So for Bar Harbor, I'm going to write this over here. The variation is about, I already forgot, oh boy, 47.8.
So let's repeat the process for the Phoenix numbers. So here for Phoenix, where's our midline? Okay, it's 86.7. I'm just rounding, hoping that this will be more than enough. Plus the amplitude, 20.238, so it's say 20.2. Oops, I deleted the whole thing. So 20.2, the amplitude, plus 86.7. That's our high point. And then 86.7 minus 20.2, that's our low point. And then 106.9 minus 66.5. That's our variation, about 40.4. Okay, so variation for Phoenix is about 40.4. And this statement says the variation is more in Bar Harbor than in Phoenix. Well, that's true, but we're looking for a statement that's not true. Right? The variation is higher in Bar Harbor. The midline average monthly temperature for Bar Harbor is lower than the midline temperature for Phoenix. Well, here's our midline, 55, and that's lower than 86, so that's true. So we're looking for a false statement. The maximum average monthly temperature for Bar Harbor is 79 degrees to the nearest degree. Well, 55.3 plus 23.9 is about 79 degrees. Let's just test that, make sure I'm not wrong. So 55.3 plus 23.9, the nearest degree is 79. So it must be choice four, but let's just take a look at that. The minimum average monthly temperature for Phoenix is 20 degrees to the nearest degree. Well, I can see right here, 86 minus 20 is not close to 20. They're hoping it'll confuse this amplitude here. It's actually much closer to about 66, right? 86.7 minus 20.2. So this is our answer. All right, hope that helped.